good shape. Your weekly dose of health information on Deutsche Welle. Find out more about what's new in medical treatment, alternative medicine, as well as nutrition, wellness, and beauty. Medical professionals, therapists, and counselors are in our studio to offer their expert advice on In Good Shape. And with me in the studio is Dr. Helmut Sörensen. He's a rheumatologist and he's president of the League Against Rheumatism Berlin. Is that right? Right. Welcome to the studio. Thank Helmut. you. Why is exercise so important for people with rheumatoid arthritis? Because rheumatoid arthritis destroys the joints and uh, they shrink if you don't move because you have pain, understandably, then they shrink and you lose your range of motion. So you have to move against uh, all pain. Against the shrinking. And which kind of exercise is the best? Every single kind of exercise? Or? Well, exercise without uh, stressing the joint, not having uh, heavy weights and so you don't do that. And is it okay to move against the pain or into the pain? Like to a certain degree, you have to move against the pain. Otherwise, you can't get anywhere. <laughs> okay. And, and how does it actually happen that the immune system of the body harms the body's own tissue? We don't know that. Uh, we know that sometimes infections uh, precede rheumatoid arthritis, any kind of infection, not a specific one. And apparently the immune system is activated and then there happens an error and the immune system, uh, instead of attacking viruses and bacteria, attacks yourself. And it is activated by a virus, perhaps? So is a virus a trigger point? Or well, a any, any infection is a trigger point, of, of course. It triggers the immune system. That is, uh, it works this way. It is triggered by an infection and then it starts working against, defending the body. And this defense sometimes gets against the body. And, and how does the disease typically progress? Is it a constant progress or how does it work? Well, if you do not do anything against it, it, it progresses constantly. The joints get holes in the bones of the joint and it gets destroyed. Mm -hmm. And it is a progressive destruction of the joint and then you lose your range of motion and you, can't, it, you cannot work. You cannot live anymore like this. Mm. So you have to do something about it, and yes. this means usually medication? Usually medication. Mm. And yes. do you have to take it for the rest of your life? Yes, you have to take it for the rest of your life because you cannot cure it, but you can put a lid on it and mm. uh, you can uh, suppress the inflammation and the destruction with certain medication, which we owe the uh, treatment of cancer, for instance, like methotrexate. You take a small dose of methotrexate, take once a week methotrexate, and the, sometimes it is enough to, uh, to stop the destruction of the joints. And, and what about lifestyle changes? We got a viewer question from Canada. Susanna Eisenberg likes to know um, if there are some new approaches and if you can just um, yeah, avoid certain foods like meat, for instance. Uh, yeah, to lower the effect of rheumatoid arthritis. Unfortunately, there is no diet like in diabetes. You cannot say, keep this diet and you don't get rheumatoid arthritis. This is not the case. But some people, uh, some people feel that w when they eat meat, the disease gets worse. But it's only in some people. Other people say, we can eat everything and nothing happens. But there's some connection with meat. Maybe it's the foreign protein which the body doesn't work, doesn't want. So is it a good idea to get a vegetarian then if you are suffering yes, from... Yes, that would be a good idea. What about other kinds of alternative treatments like acupuncture? Does it help at all? It helps against pain to a certain degree, but it doesn't help you if you have pain, have less pain for, for, for an hour, but the inflammation goes on. Dr. Sörensen, how does fibromyalgia start? What's the cause of it? Well, these patients get pain all over, they say. And when you examine them, you, f you find out that the pain is at the insertions of the tendons and muscles. This is where the like tendon Like tennis elbow, yeah. Yeah. Or, and, and they have it all over the body. And it starts, we don't know why. Okay, and, and if you don't know what it, where it comes from, you don't know how to treat it? Well, we cannot treat the cause because we don't know it. But we can try to suppress the, the pain. The bad thing is that painkillers don't really help well, not as well as in other pain diseases. So you often have to choose uh, medications 
which where you um, where you influence the psyche. Yeah, psychotherapy is one thing, but the medications also which you use, like amitriptyline, which uh, cause... Which is an antidepressant drug. Which is an antidepressant drug. But if you take it in a very small dose, it's not in 200 milligrams, but in 10 milligrams, it helps the sleep and the relaxation. And that is the problem. But, but that brings me back to the cause of it, because many doctors think that it's just a psychological disease, like, like a depression in, in, resulting in kind of bodily pain. Is this true? Is it just all psychosomatic? In, not all. It is also a psychosomatic uh, disease. Uh, if you have pain, you get depression. If you have pain for a long period of time, you get depression. Uh, but it's a problem of relaxation. They cannot relax, and uh, this is the problem. You have to find out how they can relax. You have to take some, bur some psychological burden from them. Psychotherapy is also of good use, but you also have to give the medication to relax them. And amitriptyline, for instance, is one of these medications. You might take duloxetine or pregabalin. These are also medications which you take in depression uh, diseases. Uh, so you have to take these medications because uh, painkillers don't usually work well. And can fibromyalgia ever be cured? Probably not because we do not know the cause of it, mm. uh, but it could be uh, improved mm. uh, with uh, psychotherapy, physiotherapy, and some of these medications. Okay. Let's get back a little bit to rheumatism or rheumatic diseases um, as, as a whole thing. Um, when do a patient uh, need to see the doctor? If you feel that your joints hurt, it might not be just fibromyalgia. Yeah. Uh, if you see that the joints are swelling, then it is possible uh, uh, in no case fibromyalgia, mm. then it might be rheumatoid arthritis or any other uh, disease which uh, has arthritis, mm -hmm. swelling mm. and inflammation of the joints. And there you have to act quickly mm -hmm. because we know that within three weeks we uh, see some uh, holes in the cartilage in the three weeks and then six weeks after the beginning of rheumatoid arthritis, for instance, you see bone, uh, holes in the bone. So you have to act quickly, and the, therefore you have to go see the doctor soon so that he can uh, start the treatment as soon as possible. So there's a very small window of opportunity. That is right. You can start treatment. That's right. Dr. Zionsen, thank you so much for being with us in the studio today. Thank you.